This is the 41st video of the Wargaming of Wargame Design Studios 1864 Virginia campaign. And it's a thrilling game, it is. We've taken 64 turns <laughs> with seeing only one Confederate supply unit. It is May 5th, 1864, 4 p.m. I think the Battle of the Wilderness occurred between May 5th and May 7th. So <laughs> we're still early into the game, and we're at turn 64 out of 1,390 turns. It's... A huge map goes all the way to Richmond, and we'll be traveling there. And uh, it's 1.1 million hexes. How's that for a big map? And it's Union movement as usual. Now we have to determine what we moved. Let's first of all get rid of objectives. And let's see what we've moved. We've moved those guys. Go up to the uh, six core. Oh, looks like we haven't moved them. We haven't moved the supply. We haven't moved the supply. Okay, let's see where we left off. We moved this, but not this. Okay, that tells us what we need to know. So we aren't waiting around Chancellorsville like Grant did. We're getting out of Dodge as quick as we can and are heading to Richmond. Grant wanted to fight Lee's army wherever he was, but that was kind of stupid. All I did was it cost him a lot of casualties for nothing. All you had to do was go towards Richmond. Lee would show up sooner or later. That was a given. So why chase Lee all over the woods and attack him in, in disadvantageous terrain when you can go to w Richmond, send out your spies, and then maybe set up an ambush for the Lee, as long as you're between him and Richmond, he'll almost have to attack you. Now in this game, you've got to endure a lot of boredom, because you keep moving, and it seems like that's all you're doing, which is all you're doing. <laughs> And I'm moving away from Lee because I don't want to fight him in the woods. It's highly disadvantageous. Artillery can't deploy in the woods, so you lose your artillery factor. Then you move as slow as molasses in January in the woods, so you you can't take advantage of your numbers because you can't flank anyone. They can see a flank attack coming a mile away and you can just move out of it. And you can't exploit any success because you move so slow, moving like one or two hexes a turn. So it's not a good idea for the Union Army to fight in the woods. It's a good idea for Lee. So 
So we don't want to be there when we have our battle. We want to be out in the open somewhere. Relatively open. You're not going to get completely open ground. But there is a bunch of it around. Like right here. This would be a nice place to fight. If you have superior numbers. And the Union has superior numbers. But it's kind of a shit army. It has a lot of low morale. As you have... Draft dodgers, bounty jumpers, like the scum of the earth in the army. So the morale is pretty low. These guys, if a twig snaps, they'll run away. And they'll take everybody with them. I think I played a couple. Yeah, I did. I played a couple turns of this a, while, a ways away a while ago. And I remember I had a brigade leading each column. And the brigade was really low morale. So the Confederates meleeed one regiment in each of those brigades. And both brigades ran away. They routed and ran away. The whole brigade, just one guy, got melee and the whole brigade went away plus he took a lot of artillery with him in both brigades and what happened is the first guy had really low morale so he routed and then everybody nearby has to check for route well they had low morale but when you're checking for route because someone else routed your morale automatically goes down one level. So if the guy that routed had D morale, the units checking had E, so they were sure to route, and that's exactly what happened. And the artillery, who had C morale, went down to D, and they, they routed. So the, the, the head of both columns was just evaporated. So in this battle, what the Confederates really want to do is they want to melee the Union bad because you're going to force <laughs> a whole lot of them to run away. The Confederates have bigger regiments and their morale is superb. I mean, those were, those were the hardened veterans And so you got to be really careful that the Confederates don't sneak up on you and all of a sudden come out of the woods and melee you because you'll be a dead duck. Whereas you try to melee the Confederates, they'll whip your ass. First of all, they're bigger than you are, unit per unit. And second, their morale is like B and A. And you're like a D. <laughs> so if, if both sides have to take a morale check, guess who's going to get the short stick? So that's why the Union doesn't really want to fight in the woods, because they have a shit army for the woods. And even in the open, it's not too good, but they might have enough firepower to disorder the Confederates. They better have. But I don't know how AI looks at it. If The way I look at it, if I'm playing the Confederates, which I will if I live long enough next time, because this is 1,390 turns, and we are going to take Richmond. No matter how long that takes, we are going to take it. And there are troops there. Beauregard is at Bermuda 100 with, I think, 15,000 troops, and then Richmond has a garrison, I don't know, six, 7,000, something like that, maybe more, because it has Pickett's division, some cavalry, and I think another division. I don't know whether it's hoax or what. So that's the Six Corps. We're all done with them. Now we're going to find, here's the Ninth Corps. This is Burnside's Corps. So,
we're headed down this turnpike as well. And we got the army trains behind them. And as soon as Burnside crosses the Rappahannock, we're going to tighten up this division. Look at all the space in between every... Ah, shit. He went too far. Yeah, I should really do this so I can see what I'm doing. But I have no idea what the Confederates are doing or where they are. None. That's where this is great, you know, playing fog of war. You can only do that on an, elect on an electronic game. You can't do it on a board game. Because I literally have no idea. I mean, he could be across Telegraph Road. 30 hexes below me. I'm going to have to scout now to see if that's true. But see, that's when I play the Confederates, and I will after this. Like I said, if I live long enough. Um, that's exactly what I'll do. I will head towards Telegraph Road and uh, set up there and wait for the Union. Send out my cavalry, figure out where the Union is. I know where he has to go. It takes him forever to get across the Rappahannock. So it's not like he can move away from me. The Union Army now is tremendously long. Take a look at this. It goes from way up here, and there's a couple units up here, but I'm not going to count those. It goes from way over there, down here, along here, way down here. That's a long ways. So the Union just can't slip by me. And that, for all I know, that's what the Confederates may be doing. Because he sure isn't advancing on me. Because by this time, historically, he would have been... Let's just see. Battle of the Wilderness. From the 5th to the 2nd. Does it say when it started? Morning of May 5th, the Union Army attacked the Confederate Second Corps. That afternoon, the Third Corps. Okay, so on the morning, it doesn't say when. On the morning of the 5th. Well, we're 4 p.m. on the 5th. That's late afternoon. So the Confederates were on both the third, both Ewell's and, and A.P. Hill's corps were attacking well before this time. I can't even find them. So it's a completely different situation here. Uh, where the hell did I leave off right here? And that's the nice thing about these campaign games. They never duplicate what historically happened. I'm playing a Waterloo campaign game, which includes all four battlefields. Big map, it goes from Cher Loire north to, to north of the Waterloo battlefield. goes to Vavre, covers all that ground. Lene 
And I've, I've fought at Quad Bra. I've never fought at Ligny. And I played both sides. I never fought at Waterloo. You know, fought at different areas, but not those. So, you know, it's... There's probably no reason there'd be a battle in the wilderness unless you want to catch the Union Army there. And you know where it's going to be. That's where it's going to be, the wilderness. I'm still I'm still not even through it here with the Ninth Corps, and it's like 64 turns. It's probably going to be 80 turns before I'm clear of the wilderness, maybe more. So it takes quite a long time to clear the wilderness. And since the Confederates aren't attacking, they're probably setting up for a defense somewhere. Now the quickest way to Richmond by far is down Telegraph Road. So that's another assumption you can make. Uh, just got to continue to scour everything. Now, when does it get dark here? Probably pretty soon. Uh, parameter data. Dusk is 2000. What is that? Uh, 8 o'clock. Oh, that's dusk. Night turns are 60 minutes. So dusk usually, a day turn is 30 minutes. So I would say dusk is going to be 8, 8.30, and then it'll be dark at 9. You don't want to be fighting or deploying off the road at night. You pick up a lot of fatigue points. 50 fatigue points if you move that it includes on the road and 50 fatigue points if you fire so if you move and fire that's 100 fatigue points okay i think at 200 fatigue no at over 100 fatigue points you lose one morale which means you lose one level on your effectiveness. At over 200, you lose two levels. At 300, you lose four levels. So you're practically a vegetable over 300. And it doesn't take long because you can, if you move and fire, you lose 100 each turn. So in three turns, the unit is worthless and you recover morale really slowly. And you recover morale, I think, about three times faster at night if you're not doing anything than you do during the day, which makes sense because during the day it's hard. You're not going to get any sleep, so you're going to be tired. You know, you got the heat of the day, you got animal noises, you got marching, shooting, all kinds of stuff going on, so you're not going to get much sleep. So you got to be... Uh, you don't want to be near the enemy at night, especially AI, because... AI doesn't pay a whole lot of attention to fatigue. In fact, what it'll do is any disrupted units that are in line, it'll march right up and shoot at you until those disrupted units finally, do, they don't respond to any orders at all. It doesn't matter. And AI will do that to artillery. 
So it'll attack you in the dead of night. And what are you going to do? Not reply? He's just going to pound you with fire? I mean, you're going to reply. And that's the whole, that's its whole point. It takes a disordered unit, throws it against you, and disorders you. So his disordered unit is more disordered, but your fresh unit becomes disordered. So who wins on that game? It's hard to say. So artificial intelligence has a lot of scary things it does. And I mean, yes, you can outthink it. And it doesn't do certain things well, like it doesn't scout. It does that badly. And one of the things it does, it, it holds its position to the last man, literally. So it's like every fight is the Alamo. And units are hard to kill totally. You know, normally, when I get a unit disordered, I tend to withdraw it from combat, send an officer there to try to rally it. Not AI. He'll keep it in battle. I used to know a human war gamer like that. It's Tony Webb. And he used to live in Orange County, California. I used to war game with him all the time. And I think he moved back to, uh, like, uh, was it Tennessee? No, I think it was West Virginia. He liked it up in the mountains there. So he, California, Christ, it's just smog. So he got his wife and his kid out of there and went back home to where his relatives were. But... Uh, but he was he played like that. Holy shit. I remember we I played Gettysburg Gettysburg game against him, TSS, which was um, um, SPI's flagship one of its flagship games. Battle of Gettysburg. Very good game. And uh, he would be the Confederates and Jesus Christ, he would come at you with everything he had unceasingly if he got more troops he came at you with them and it was frightening your men were falling like leaves he was just pounding you meleeing you everything and it was all out like continuously if you stood up to him you were like a hero because he was just like AI here. Merciless. Now AI is pretty slick. Especially in defense. But it's got some good attack moves too. It knows. Pretty much a bad position from a good one. I guess it's algorithms can. Determine that. To, to tool, I think, I'd say a significant degree. Now, where it falls down, and this is where I think it goes into, like, uh, Alamo defense, is when it has to think. Because they really, I think they might have, the British might have just developed a robot that can think. At least the initial... Uh, stages of thinking because it uh, supposedly can carry on a conversation with a person but I don't think most of these robots are that intelligent yet but they'll get there I think because they can amass a huge database and you know it's like playing chess you memorize a lot of the good moves. And the more you memorize, the better chess player you are. Well, a robot has unlimited access 
you know, because their memory is huge. No human could have a memory that big. So robot's not going to forget anything. And so it can simulate thinking because it's like chess. Okay, how many moves are there in chess? How many opening moves? 30, 50, 100? The robot can... Uh, can memorize a hundred, can memorize a thousand, can memorize half a million probably. So then can it memorize the second move? Maybe. How many permutations are there? Fifty, a hundred, two hundred? You know, it picks one, picks a logical one, or depending on how the algorithms are programmed. So it'll it'll get closer and closer to thinking, and I think it's probably smarter than most per people now, especially Generation Z. Guys, they're friggin' morons. They're lucky if they can uh, know enough to tie their shoes. Oh, this is the first. Now this is significant. This is a line unit we ran into here. So we'll see what happens. Um, Fortunately, he's in column, so he's not going to do much harm to me. I'm in column, too. I'm only 98 guys, but he's probably considerably bigger. So I'll back off if I'm still in one piece. So, okay. Oh. Do I get any new units? Nah. Okay, let's... Whoop. Let's see what happens here. He's going to shoot at me. That's what's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to do much. Oh, he didn't shoot at me. Well, I don't blame him. It could be a casualty or two. I can't shoot at him. I wonder if I could. And I'm certainly not going to melee him. I'm only 94 men. Okay, he'll be moving now. Now we'll see. Confederate movement phase. Okay, that guy's going to stay there apparently to block me. So there must be something to see. He's gone in the line, so I'm going to get hurt. Hopefully I'm not disordered, but I'm only 94 men. What the hell's my morale there? C, not bad. Okay. Union defensive fire. Well, I don't have any. Now, let's see how bad he gets me. Boom! Three men. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see if he can't melee me because you can't. Infantry can't melee cavalry unless it's in really bad ground. I mean, the open, so. Union movement. Okay, we're going to shuffle away from that guy. Let's get a close-up here. Okay, we're going to go there. Let's go out this way and see if we see anything. Let's see what high ground is. Okay. If I go like right down there, I can see out over this area back here. I wish these damn woods weren't in the way. Well, maybe I 
should go further down, like down here. I think I will. Now this guy. Shut off. Map elevations. Oh, four fifty five. He can put up a fight. Oh, there's a trench here, minus 50. What am I armed with? Ooh, carbine. Not bad. No, I'm in a trench. Right where I am. Where's a better place to be? Oh. I'm on high ground. I think I'll entrench where I am. 50%. I think that means that his firepower will be cut in half. And he's going to have to get pretty close to me. So I'm going to change formation, and it'll take a turn for me to dismount, and then if he comes up here, I'll be dismounted. So now that we've found him, there must be more around there. Okay. We have this guy over here. Uh, he's going to go down here. I think I'll send this guy down this a ways. I don't think that guy's alone. So we got three scouts closing in on him. What else we got around there? Ooh, look at this. A cavalry division. Shit, this is the smallest I can get. So they're to the northeast. Northwest. Northwest. Okay, that's up this way. Oh, that isn't that far away. Now, this road leads down here. This is a shitty road here, so he's, he probably didn't come up that way. This is a better road. Oh, right below him, almost. Do I want to come up through open terrain? No. Like in this case, I want to come up through the woods. Well, is that true? I guess open terrain would be better. At least I can deploy. I'm going to send a guy ahead. Let's see if he sees anything. Oh, shit. I've got all my leaders here. Well, we'll leave those fools 
Christ, it's like 10 of them. Sheridan, too. Look at these idiots. Let's creep up there and see if we see anything ahead of us. This road, he must have come up this road. Um, I think I'm going to send one guy here out this way. And then I'm going to leave the rest of these guys at this crossroads. To wait, await developments. guy over here better leave the rest of my spies in place just in the case that it turns out to be a dry hole so I'll keep moving these guys now this is the road supply units are going to get off with. On. So they can get out of the way of the main road. That works out good. Here's a cavalry unit. He's dispersed. Oh, not a unit. It's one man. He's an aide. He's disrupted, so he can only move 12, but 12 is better than nothing. Took him a bunch of movement to get across there. So he's going to go ahead down the telegraph road to see what he can see. And if someone kills him, I only lose one man. <laughs> An aide. I'm sure this that job is not to his liking. He wants to dine with the general and eat pheasant and watermelons and lived the high life no rations for him and all of a sudden he's told we've got other duties for you we want you to scout ahead of the army so he probably shit in his pants when he heard that because he knows what that means he's going to be captured or killed but He's a valuable scout. Now this cavalry will move in behind that scout and do a proper job of scouting. I think the scout is just going to go down Telegraph Road as far as he can to see if anybody is marching up it. Because technically, I should read the rules. Technically, I guess Davis could release troops and they 
I mean, he was holding, I think, two of Lee's divisions, Pickett and I think Hoke, at Bermuda 100, and both of them might have been at Bermuda 100, but Butler was corked up there, so they didn't need all those men, and then Butler started to withdraw. It wasn't. Yeah, it was Butler. And I think those units went to reinforce Grant later. So then Davis released those divisions to Lee. And if they're marching up to Lee, they're probably going to march north on the Telegraph Road. Because like I said, that's one of the most direct routes up north. So I could run into them. And two divisions in a strong position could put up a strong fight. That's why I want to get my all my supply units off the road and send In fact, the first core will be the sixth core. Then they will go down, followed by the ninth. They'll become the two lead corps in the army, and then the second and the the fifth will become the rear guard. And I'll just keep leapfrogging them down, covering the roads as I go with. Calvary, hopefully, and skirmishers. <laughs> Makes it really nice when I get everybody on the telegraph road it makes it real easy to move and we could have rain it's hot and dusty now 70 degrees out on the battlefield but we could have rain and that'll obviously affect a lot of these dirt roads. Now the Telegraph Road is paved, so it's not going to be affected much by uh, rain, but those other roads will turn to mush, especially with a lot of troops marching on them. So oh, this is a good road to march to Richmond on. on. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> yep, so this is the six core. I probably should. That allow me to see a little better what's going on here. They did a nice job on Gettysburg because uh, they have a Gettysburg campaign. It goes all the way down to Emmitsburg, which is nice. So you have the 11th and 1st Corps deployed down there. And it's 
it's uh, it's nice to see where those guys were and to move them and everything. And on that map, on this map, you can fight anywhere, but on the Gettysburg map, I mean, most of your fighting is going to be on the Gettysburg battlefield. Now, one time, I snuck around the Union Army. I was playing the Confederates. AI was the Confederates. And I snuck into Gettysburg before the Union got there. They were defending like on Hare Ridge or something, and I just snuck around their left flank. And so the funny thing is, as the Confederates, I set up on the battlefield where the Union set up. And the Union had to attack me. It didn't do a very good job because AI isn't real good on coordinated attacks. So he made a lot of piecemeal attacks. Coordinated attacks takes thinking. And AI operates a lot of times on algorithms. You know, it's like uh, computer programming, if, then, else. So it, it has different options built in. If it sees this sort of situation, then it'll do this, and if that doesn't look like a good idea, then it'll do th it'll do this. So it's kind of a rudimentary form of thinking, and most people graduating out of college now don't even have that. They have what's called emotional thinking, so they get like hysterical, and hysteria substitutes for thinking and that's why they're stupid most people even when I when I went to college you really didn't learn much there you just partied a lot and goofed off a lot they, because the teachers didn't have anything to tell you Christ most of them are too stupid to get a real job so it was a choice between going on welfare or being a teacher. And being a teacher, that's a cushy job. You don't do shit. You don't have to know shit either. You're only two pages ahead of your class. So anyway, now they don't learn how to think at all. It's all hysteria. This is like, uh, oh, they get all worked up about this dumb shit and then... Uh, I've seen people like Charlie Kirk and other try to carry on a conversation with these fools, and they just embarrass themselves. They like wet their pants, and that's their uh, that's their argument. You know, the I, I saw this one. It was funny. This guy says, "Well, he told Charlie Kirk, you never went to college, did you?" implying that he didn't know how to frame an argument. And then Kirk discussed some work that the snowflake read. And the snowflake said, yeah, I read it, but I don't remember it. And it was like one of the key documents, uh, one of the props in his argument. And Charlie Kirk says, you, you know, you better get your money back because I, I didn't go to college, but I remember it, what I read, and you didn't. So what is the benefit of you going to college? And that's true. For the most part, college is stupid. It doesn't teach you how to think. They still do memorization. They claim they don't, but that's the way they teach. Now, with the Internet, you're stupid if you go to college. In fact, a lot of businesses now, they don't want to hire college graduates, especially Ivy Leaguers, because they're, they're friggin' stupid. And they don't want to work, and they want to be promoted right off the bat, and they're, they're stupid, you know. So 
If you want a college education, you go on the Internet. Go to YouTube, Magellan. There are like 20 sites, and there's a, a site that the professors actually have their lectures for the course, you know, like 50 lectures on some course. And you can learn it that way. You, you don't have to take one of their stupid multiple choice tests, their true-false test. You just watch the videos, you listen to the professor talk or whoever's talking, and you can learn it. Like 80% of what college supposedly teaches you, you can you can go to YouTube and or Magellan, or there's a couple other ones. And you can get that knowledge. And it won't cost you, you know, a student debt of $150,000. On YouTube, it's free. On Magellan, I think you pay $20 for all year or something like that. You know, it's like... What it would demonstrate to me if I was hiring people, and I used to do that when I was a manager, if you went to college today, I'd say, well, that kind of proves how stupid you are. And throw the application in a waste paper basket. And I think that's what a lot of HR managers say they're doing. Because that diploma, it, nowadays, is just expensive ass white paper. Nothing more. You get it at Columbia or Har Harvard, it's just more expensive ass white paper. And, uh, you know, why do you want to go into debt for a teacher that's blowing smoke out of their ass that knows nothing about a job because they never had one, a real one? Teaching isn't a job. It's like one step up from welfare. Because you can be stupid and be a teacher. And a lot of teachers are. I mean, most of them are women. They're really, they're like hysterical nut jobs. But these students are even stupider, so they believe them, what they say. And then the reason businesses don't want to hire them because they have to un unlearn them from all the bad habits they picked up listening to these dummy teachers. And it's more trouble than it's worth. It's it's better to get someone out of high school that doesn't have all this baggage and teach them the stuff. And what you're learning on most jobs, AI is taken over in robotics. Why? Because most jobs aren't very difficult. You can break them down in the simple task a robot can do. You ever see how cars are manufactured? You don't need many humans to do that. And look at uh, Amazon. I think it's got tens of thousands of robots, maybe a couple hundred thousand. And all of those jobs that people are getting paid 16 18 20 dollars an hour for a robot can do. So why would you want some whiny, snotty-ass income poop who wants to take off every day why would you want to employ him just get a robot and they're doing that now in fast food you order at a kiosk you don't need a dummy there you, you have you have a icon of a hamburger you have a, a ketchup bottle you have a mustard bottle you just press what you want on a damn hamburger you have pickle you don't need a per, one of those dummies there for $20 an hour. Same thing making the food. Robots can make the food better than the dummies. So, you know, college education really isn't worth anything anymore. And libraries are the same thing. Why do we still have libraries? That's so stupid. Most of the books that are published now are online. 
So uh, you can, uh, everybody, I think, when they go to college, they get a laptop. And there's no reason why you couldn't get one in high school. Fire all the teachers, you'd have plenty of money for laptops. You don't need the fucking teachers. They don't know anything. You have one person makes the class videos and everybody accesses that video. So it's the same. So everybody's getting taught the same. But you don't have a moron writing what's taught. Have a normal person develop it, not a teacher, because they're too fucking stupid. So, uh, you know, everybody learns at home. You don't have to go to a school. Well, to, they say to get social skills, but all you do is get beat up at school and turned into a yo-yo. So you might be better off not associating with as few people as possible, because... Most of the people you associate with are imbeciles. So, you know, the libraries are all online. Books like Amazon, Kindle, and what's the other one, Nook? You can get all those books online. So for the humongous, for a fraction of the humongous cost of running that library you could have all the kids online they have uh, Amazon Kindle so they got uh, like 5 million books online and you don't need the f stupid library and the last time I was in a library because it must have been 20 years ago they used to have research people I don't know if they still have them they probably do but they you know I'd ask them something you know what they did? They went to Google. <laughs> it's like, I can do that. <laughs> you don't need to pay for a research person that goes on Google. Go home and do it. Or on your cell phone. You got internet service on most of those. So it's like, just like teachers are worthless... So are libraries. They shouldn't exist anymore. They, they probably won't in 20 years. But they should be phased out now. They're, bu they, they're building new libraries. For what? Well, of course, look who builds them. Government employees. They, they're imbeciles. The, uh, the people that run the school districts, I suppose. And they're... they're I mean, I don't care what you say. If a person works for the government, he's an idiot. That's why he works for the government, because you have such stupid jobs the government pays for, and you can perform them incompetently, and you still get promoted. But I like this, this teacher. I worked at this retail store. This teacher came in. She was a second grade teacher and she earned $92,000. And I said, how the hell does that happen? The kids sleep most of the day. What the hell does she do that uh, equals $92,000 salary? She said, well, it's real easy. You just take these courses and then you qualify for a bigger salary. I mean... These courses are for morons. I started to take a teaching course one time. And after two weeks, I couldn't stand it anymore. The people in there were all imbeciles. And the teacher was a total imbecile. And I figured I wasn't going to waste any money listening to this fool. And so I dropped it. But see... You take these kind of moron courses, and now you get an automatic A. And then your salary's boosted. You don't have to be any good. You don't have to know shit. You just take the course. You get an automatic pass on it, and your salary goes up. And that's how you get $92,000 for a second-grade teacher. It should be $9,200. 
take off one digit. That's about what it's worth. I don't know how I got off on all this stuff. Just not having anything to do but mindlessly moving these units. I guess makes me more talkative. Well, the hour's up. I still got a bunch of moves to go. So we're going to can it. And hopefully I won't talk as much next time. So I'm sure people will disagree and probably have a shit fit over stuff I say. But those are snowflakes, so that's okay. Let them shit in their pants. They'll be doing that a lot when they move out of their mommy's basement and have to earn their own money when the government doles run out. So they might as well get used to it. <laughs>